Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. We are talking masterpiece fragrances today. The creme de la creme. In my opinion, some of the best designer fragrances on the market. Both fresh and warm, kind of the whole spectrum. And uh, really, this video is quite simple because it's just one fragrance. Dracar Noir. All right, that's the video. Um, thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. And I'm just playing, there's, there's 10 fragrances to come. So all the fragrances I'm gonna talk about here today are linked in the description below. Feel free to check them out down there. And here are some codes that you can peruse and use at a bunch of different websites if you'd like to save some money. Triple Traders, Frag Bar, they have a lot of uh, clone fragrances on those websites. Of course, Max Aroma, Twisted Lily, they've got a lot of fragrances there. And then Lucky Scent, the code for December is gonna be Gents DEC. So you wanna use that code, Gents DEC. After December, that code goes away. All right, let's get started. No particular order, so the first fragrance I talk about is not worse than the last one. I would like to start things today with Prada Lone. Good old Prada Lone. Now when this first released, there was actually a little bit of blowback. Initially, some people were thinking it wasn't that great, but I've always really loved this one. I think that it's a perfect casual fragrance with a nice classy edge to it. It's got a powdery, soapy clean iris that really is synonymous with Prada in general at this point. And it's a perfect fragrance to wear to the office as well and a decent compliment puller. Now this line has definitely seen better days. Prada Lone intense, probably the best one of the whole bunch now in the US, uh, much more difficult to find. Prada Lone Low, Prada Lone Water Splash, Absolute. There were a number of different Prada Lone flankers, though at this point, the line feels like it's kind of winding down. Now I hope that I'm wrong, and I hope that next year they come out with a new Prada Lone flanker and kind of kick things off again and really inject some life into this line. But Prada at this point seems to be just paying attention to Luna Rosa as far as men's fragrances goes, and that's about it. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if I saw a product come out with an entirely new line before we get a new flanker of this one. But I do hope, I really do, that this line keeps going and that they, like I said, pump out some new ones, give us some new interesting takes on the Prada Lone line, because if this does go away, I'm gonna really miss it when it's gone. After that one, uh, a fragrance that, if you went back a few years, and you told me that I was gonna be calling this a masterpiece, I would slap my own self. I'm like, nah, dude, you moron. But as time has gone, it's grown on me a bunch, and I've told you guys this as well. It's Dior Ohm 2020. Now, Dior Ohm Original, Dior Ohm Intense, those fragrances are still more near and dear to my heart than this one is, but this is really good. It's a very fresh, modern, woodsy fragrance that has uh, kind of like Prada Lome, a nice classy edge to it as well. So it gives it great usability and versatility. I think you can pull this off in pretty much any season, though Dior Homme Sport might be a little bit better suited for summertime. Suited, what was that? It just smells great. I mean, it set its own DNA with this one. Yes, like I said, Dior Homme Sport that came out after this one is similar to it, but this was its own thing. You know, they weren't chasing necessarily trends of other brands with this one. And while it's always gonna catch some flack for basically stepping in in the place of Dior Homme Original, Dior Homme 2020 is still a great release. But I do have to get some iris in here, so Valentino Womo Intense. This is a fragrance that people were scared was discontinued because for a time there, it was really difficult to find. It basically just disappeared from all of the uh, websites, all the stores, and it was just gone. But then it came back in a new bottle style, but still, it came back. And when I say new bottle style, obviously like the main part of the bottle still looks the same, but they changed up the cap and everything. And that was because I believe Valentino was changing hands at the time as far as their fragrance division. And so they had to kind of like work out, you know, changing this fragrance over and, and putting it back out on the market. But Valentino Womo Intense is one of the best iris designer fragrances ever, period. It has a, a great, you know, creamy lipsticky iris, but it's not as uh, 
potentially off-putting as Dior Homme Intense. I, I don't find Dior Homme Intense off-putting at all, but this one, most people would say, is a little bit easier to wear, I guess I should say. And then the leather in there adds a nice touch. It has uh, just the right amount of sweetness. It's another one that's extremely classy, very sexy. I just think it's fantastic. So if you love Iris, you have got to check this one out. From there, Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Italian Love. Yes, it's just an annual summer flanker for light blue. And yeah, some people, uh, you know, maybe you're not ultra hyped about light blue anymore because there is an annual flanker, but I love this one. I love light blue forever as well, but Italian love is just a little bit easier to pull off for more people. Now, I need to tell you that in the opening here, if you've never smelled it, there is a massive citrus blast and it is more of a natural citrus smell. So it's got tartness to it. There's sweetness and freshness, yes, but there's also kind of this sour edge to it. You know, a little bit of, like I said, tart, rindy kind of citrus as well. So the main citrus you're gonna get there is grapefruit. Also have a little bit of bergamot, some ozonic notes, some woods as it dries down. It's an extremely easy wearing fragrance for summer, and it definitely will set you apart from what most people nowadays are wearing. But you do have to really enjoy that like I said, more natural take on citrus. I'm gonna throw it back a little bit to CH Men. Not throwing it back too far, but throwing it back a little while. So this one originally came out in 2009, had this bottle style right here with a little ribbon on there. It has changed a number of times, but you can still easily find this fragrance. When I say it has changed, I mean the presentation style. Bottle looks pretty much the same, but you'll see different colors of like the, uh, the little CH logo and everything else on there, different placements of it. Now, this fragrance is one that still works extremely well, and it's pretty unique also. So this one has an extremely sexy, sugary, sweet leather and vanilla combo as it dries down. Off the top, it's actually got a little bit of a, a green edge to it, touch of citrus, but it's really that dry down that makes this one. Not that the opening smells bad, because it doesn't. It's just the dry down of CH Men is one of the best evening fragrances if you want something that's not crazy loud in the designer realm of the past couple decades. And because it is past its peak as far as um, overall popularity, it is once again gonna be a fragrance that sets you apart a little bit from what most people are gonna be wearing. So CH Men, still worth checking out, really smells amazing. The performance is so-so, that's really the only drawback for it. And since we're on the kick of a fragrance that is perfect for an evening out, that's super sexy, big compliment puller with performance that's so-so, the next one is the One Eau de Parfum from Dolce & Gabbana, of course, and uh, yeah, it's got some similarities as far as overlapping when you would use them. I think overall CH Men is probably a little bit more versatile. This one is more, you know, fall, winter, evening. That's kind of when it's generally uh, proposed to be used. But I think that the One Eau de Parfum is once again, one of the best smelling designer fragrances ever. I also love the One Eau de Toilette as well, but the One Eau de Parfum just kind of takes everything a step further. So you have a little citrus off the top and then a bunch of spices, both fresh and warm, and then amber and tobacco in the dry down. Again, just smells absolutely fantastic. It's really alluring, inviting. I mean, this one has been one of my most complimented fragrances ever. The One Eau de Parfum is just a compliment beast. I mean, it is the perfect, the quintessential date night fragrance. And kind of like CH Men, it's been out for a minute. So, you know, it's not the hot new thing, but I still think this is a masterpiece just like that. One. Now for a newer one, Lamal Elixir. This is so stupid good. I just don't know where Jean-Paul Gaultier goes from here because with Lamal Le Parfum, I thought, man, this is really some stuff, some great stuff. You know, how are you gonna improve upon it? Don't know if you can. Then they came out with this and I was like, <laughs> so next year, whew, yeah. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know how they release something next year that does not become a disappointment if they try to like improve on this, but they did it before. So technically it's possible. We could get something somehow even better than this, but I don't know. I'm rooting for them. Oh man. Vanilla, honey, Tonka, tobacco, and then a little lavender and mint in there as well that ties it in with the whole Lamal line is what makes this one up. In the air, it is just 
absurdly good. The projection is there, longevity is there. It has just the right amount of warmth and sweetness, a very faint hint of powder, which really just gives the fragrance more depth, makes it more interesting. I have no clue how they can improve upon this, but I guess we'll see. For me, this is the best Lamal fragrance period right now. Next up, we have a fragrance from the house of Lacoste, which is not a house that most people would think of as having masterpiece fragrances, but they actually have a lot of scents that are exceptional at what they do. Uh, Lacoste typically makes fragrances that are more sporty, if you want to call it that, you know, more of a fresh type of scent profile, good for wearing to the gym or outdoors or in casual situations. This one, I think, is one of the best. It's L1212 Blanc. Oh, intense. This one does have that, that sporty feel like you would expect from Lacoste, but then it also has a nice sophistication to it. Mandarin orange, cardamom, lavender, some woods in there, sort of like creamy woods, and then turmeric, which is probably the most interesting note in the scent. Some people have drawn like some faint comparisons to Dior Homme Sport, the new Dior Homme Sport. Uh, it doesn't really smell close to it though, but it does similar things, like you would wear it at the same time. So it has enough freshness and it has enough of like a, a balance of sweet and also spicy in there that you can wear this in those more casual situations or like the gym or whatever. But then it also has a nice kind of Again, a uh, classy balance to it, where you could wear this in more situations than just the gym. You can easily make that a day-to-day -day fragrance, a signature scent. You can wear that as an office fragrance. You can do a lot with it. And most scents from Lacoste are typically not too expensive at discounters. This one is newer, so it's still not cheap, but you can find it for, I think, between $50 and $60. And as time goes on, it should drop a little bit more, which makes it even more attractive. All right, now with this next one, I'm breaking one of my own rules. Now, typically, I will not talk about a fragrance that's very difficult to find because it can be frustrating, of course, for people who look it up and then they go, oh, that sounds really good. Ah, oh, it's crazy expensive and I can't find it at any of the places I normally shop. But with this one, I did want to bring it up and I will say I wouldn't pay the prices that you're going to see on eBay. It's like two to three hundred dollars. But if you see this pop up at a discounter, which from time to time it does, it's rare, but it does, then scoop it up. At least if it sounds interesting. Isi Miyake Noir Ombre. I'll say one of the most frustrating things, period, about Isi Miyake is that their cool weather fragrances are typically amazing. Not good, not great, amazing. And they are also impossible to find. So Noir Ombre, that's one of them, obviously the one we're talking about here today, but there are a bunch of others. Bois Arctique, or Sans, Noir Argent, Pulse of the Night, Polaris. I mean, there are a bunch and they're all worth owning, but in the US anyway, just you can't find them. Basically they'll pop up at discounters, sell out like that, and then be sold out for the next six months to a year. So anyway, about this one, this is one of the best designer amber fragrances, period, ever. Amber, vanilla, saffron, cinnamon, leather, and you can pick that leather up right away. They all combine together. It's extremely rich, it's deep, it's bold, and it's blended together so well, where yes, you can pick those notes out, you can get the leather, you can get the saffron, you can get the amber, but they're working harmoniously together. So while you can pick each one out, it's not like they're they're shouting out and standing out from the crowd. It's just all working together beautifully. So if you can find this, it's worth it, uh, but don't pay insane prices for it, especially not if you've never smelled it. You don't wanna go blind buy it for like $300 because then you're just setting yourself up to be disappointed. All right, last but not least, Varvedos Artisan Pure. Artisan Pure, bit of a hype beast in the past, uh, mainly I feel like because of the price point and that definitely does help because you can find this around 30 bucks and at $30, it is an amazing deal. Like most Varvedos fragrances, the quality here is good. It smells really nice right off the rip. The performance is so-so but it is at the end of the day, a very fresh fragrance. So that's kind of expected. So you got a lot of citrus in here with a, kind of a green edge as well. It's got a nice soapy clean kind of vibe to it. Almost smells like white florals in there, the way that it has an almost creamy at times feel to it. It's also very zingy, uplifting, bright, refreshing. It has a, a great versatility to it in spring and summertime. You can wear that pretty much any place. People are gonna enjoy it. 
And really the color scheme here is perfect. I mean, it, it really captures how this one comes across. So there we go, 10 fragrances that I think are masterpieces in their own way, especially for the price point that you can find some of these at. I think that they do things that are unique, that are kind of their own style while still maintaining great wearability. So they really tick pretty much every box, at least for what they're each individually trying to do. Thank you guys for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.